In this video for our scavengers project, we're going to look at creating the additional pieces of the game board, including the floor, food pickups, obstacles, and exit. The floor pieces are going to be the simplest. They're just going to consist of a sprite, which is going to serve as the background for our level. Let's go ahead and create a new game object. We'll call this floor one, and we're going to add a sprite renderer component. For the sprite, we're going to choose our first floor sprite. We're going to set the sorting layer for this to floor. With that done, we're going to drag our floor tile to our prefabs folder. And then we're going to reuse this by switching the sprite to the next sprite in our sheet. This will be floor two. Change it to floor three. And then we're just going to repeat the process. I'm going to fast forward the video while I do this. And there we go. Next, we're going to create the exit tile. We can reuse this, change the name to exit, and select our exit sign sprite. The exit is going to need a box collider 2D component so that we can detect when the player has moved onto it. We're going to set the box collider 2D to is trigger so that it won't actually prevent the player from moving onto the space, but just detect the collision. We're going to set exit to our items layer so that it will be rendered under the player, but in front of the floor. The only other thing we're going to change is we're going to change the tag to our exit tag that we defined earlier. Drag that down to our prefabs folder. Next, we're going to create our food object. Select our fruits sprite. We're going to change the sorting layer to our items layer, and we're going to change the tag to food. The food is also going to use a box collider 2D with is trigger active. We're going to make our soda object next. And we're going to change the tag to our predefined soda tag. The layer can remain as default because these are not actually going to block the player or enemies from moving into their space. They're just going to be picked up if the player moves over them. Drag that down to the prefabs folder. Next, we're going to create our inner and outer wall tiles. Let's do the outer walls first. We'll call this outer wall one. And we'll select our rocky wall sprite here. This is going to have a box collider 2D, but it's not going to be a trigger. This is actually going to prevent the player and the enemies from moving into its space. We're going to set the tag to untagged and the layer to blocking layer because this is actually going to block the player's movement. The sorting layer can be floor because this is going to be part of the outer wall which is going to border the level which nothing is going to be able to move into. Drag it to the prefabs folder. And we can reuse this for outer wall 2. Rename it to outer wall 2 and let's change the sprite. Now, to be clear, these are only visual variations. We don't want all of our tiles to look the same, which is why we're creating these. And we'll do outer wall three as well. Next, we're going to create the inner walls, which are going to block the player and the enemy from moving around the level. We'll change the name here to wall one, and we're going to change the sprite as well. We'll use our first kind of bramble sprite. 
Now this is actually going to be placed on top of the floor, so we're going to set the sorting layer to items. And it's also going to block movement, so we're going to keep it on blocking layer. Let's drag it down. And now we're just going to create a few variations on the same thing. We'll make wall two. Change the sprite, drag it down. And so there we go. We've basically got our complete tile set. There's going to be a couple modified versions of these wall tiles that will fit in later, but this is basically everything that we need to move to the next stage, which is laying out our game board using a script.